Hello, and in today's 5 Minute Friday, we're going to discuss four related but different tools that you can use to make sure that any maps you create are centimeter level accurate. Before we start, I'd like to thank Brian Christensen for clearing up some of my terminology. Brian is a professional land surveyor, drone nerd, and all around good chap who has a keen interest in expanding the use of drones in surveying. So let's get to it. I'm going to cover four things, RTK, PPK, ground control points or GCPs, and checkpoints. All of them help ensure your maps have centimeter level accuracy. I wanted to do this because I'd seen a few posts recently where even experienced people were confused about what they are, so I thought I would clear things up here. This is a subject where it would be very easy to go down a giant rabbit hole and turn it into a 45 minute Friday, so I'm going to keep it simple here. If you want more details on a specific area, leave a comment, and if there's enough interest, then I'll do a deep dive. With that said, what are RTK, PPK, GCPs and checkpoints? What do they do? And what are the pros and cons for each? First, let's understand that GPS, or GNSS if we're being more technically correct, is only accurate to a few meters. If you need centimeter level accuracy, as many applications do, then this is obviously not good enough. I'll start with RTK and PPK because they're closely related and then we'll move on to the others. RTK and PPK are both methods of applying corrections to the geolocation of photos captured to ensure that they are accurately placed in the real world with centimeter accuracy. The main difference is when the adjustment is made. So let's start with RTK. RTK stands for real-time kinematic, and the important part here is real-time which means the adjustments are applied to the drone while it is flying. In this case, the drone receives two sets of signals, a GPS signal and a correction signal from a highly accurate GPS that's been placed on a known location, which we will call the base station. The theory here is quite simple. Both the drone and the base station are receiving the same GPS signals, but the base station already knows exactly where it is. The base station compares its known location with the calculated GPS location, calculates the difference, and then sends an adjustment to the drone in real time. The drone then uses that adjustment to shift its position and also, crucially, to update the metadata that is written to each photo captured. This allows for much more accurate flights, and since it happens in real time, there is less processing to do after the flight because each photo is accurately geotagged. Advantages to this method are It's fast and easy to set up, requiring only one known point, which is often provided by a local municipality or other government body. It can be performed in areas that are difficult to access, such as rough terrain, and it requires no special processing afterwards. Disadvantages are, it requires specialized equipment on the drone and not all drones support this. RTK can fail during the flight if a good signal with the base is lost, resulting in inaccurate data collection. And the base station needs to be close enough to the flight area and must be within 10 kilometers for corrections to be good enough. The further away the base station, the more errors will be introduced because they might be using different satellites. Now let's talk about PPK. With PPK, the PP stands for post processing, which means that the adjustments to the photo geolocation is made after the flight. In this case, we will set up the GNSS receiver in a known location, but instead of it sending out a correction signal, it captures a log of the GPS data being received over the full duration of the flight. After the flight, the photos are processed in special software. Since both the GPS information and the photos are tagged with a highly accurate date and time, the software is able to compare the GPS data captured at the time the photo was taken, calculate any adjustment, and then update the geolocation metadata of the photo with the new corrected location. It's worth mentioning here that you do need an enterprise level drone or something with an RTK module installed 
otherwise the observation files that you need for the PPK process are not collected. Advantages to this method are it does not require an RTK enabled drone and it does not suffer from problems caused by a loss of signal. Disadvantages of this method it requires an extra step before photos are ready to be used and it requires special software that is often expensive. One nice thing is that if you have a highly accurate GNSS receiver such as an MLID RS2 or 3 you don't have to pick one. The GNSS receiver is fully capable of sending out an RTK signal while capturing logs at the same time. If you do this you can use the RTK data and should a signal loss or some other error creep in you still have the option to post process to fix any issues. At the end of this process you should have a full set of images that have been updated with accurate geolocations and are ready to be turned into a map. Turning it into a map is when we will use GCPs and checkpoints but since we are already over the five minute mark I'll keep that until the next video. And that's it. I realize this is a simplified view and I left out lots of details, but feel free to comment if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.